Hey guys, this video is an excerpt from Ask the Doc live Q&A meeting in the Anabolic Doc app. Every Thursday, I host a Zoom meeting so app members can ask me a question and they get their answers live in the meeting. I hope you enjoy this Q&A. And if you have a question for me, just join the app and ask me the question during these Ask the Doc meetings. I'm currently on 200 milligrams of test E a week. July, I was taking 250 and my testosterone was 1100. I lowered it to 200 and somehow my testosterone went up 130. When you inject testosterone, the free testosterone, not to mention the total, if you go right after the injection within even two or three days, it's going to be very high. Even if you take a small dose, but you go to the lab right after, you're going to see it off the chart. Testosterone is such a moving target. Does that answer the question? So if I split it up into two, and next time I get my blood results, should I wait a full seven days? You, no, 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 no. That's a good question. And, and a lot of guys will do that to make sure the doctor sees a nice low number. Wink, wink. But but it's like, it's, it's really false, right? So it's like, it's called nadir dosing, where a doctor, we've known this for decades, when you're giving testosterone esters, I don't care if it's Probe, Sip, Ananthate, Sussanon 250, and Undecanate's different, right? Because that's a very long-acting, uh, long-acting testosterone Undecanate injection, 750 to a gram, and it's given every 10 weeks to 12 weeks in America and Europe, right? It's, it's every it's every three months, um, and then they look at the nadir. They may look at a peak trough, but the half-life is weeks. And the half-life of sipinate or enanthate is maybe five days to seven days, depending on your fingerprint genetics. So when you're micro-dosing testosterone esters like sipinate and enanthate, it's, it's really going to be great to do it, in my opinion, every five days, because I don't want to do it every day, every other day. I can't even remember every twice a week because I'm just lazy because I've been doing it for so long. You're a newbie, right? You're a newbie. I've been on for about, oh, about two and a half years. Not kind of a newbie then, and you're able to do it twice. So you're doing it every three and four days, aren't you? Three, four, three, four, three, four. Yeah, I try to do it like maybe Wednesday morning and then Saturday night. And if you can break it up, the way guys do it every really twice a week is right, like maybe like you're doing it on that shift transition day. They do it once in the morning or the next time at night. So they're splitting it literally every three and a half days. So it's hard to do, but guys can do it if you're very, you know, regimen, if you're, reg, you know, very kind of organized guy. I'm pretty organized, but I do it every five days and even I forget that. So when you when you when the typical guy is doing it twice a week, he's alternating three day, four day, three, and that's good enough. So what, what my opinion would be is to go on the fourth day, which is going to be the nadir. That's a trough, and then you look at that number for yourself and the doctor, and then you kind of eyeball it and you go, well. That's the number. You're going to probably see that the free is going to be higher than the total because it's an ester. You're overloading the sexual and binding globulin and the albumin to carry it, and that's going to be measured on the total. And then everything else is in the free circulation, and that's going into your brain. And that's why men feels like, ah, but they can feel good. They can feel irritated. They can feel aggressive, or they can feel sexual. Maybe too, I talked to a guy yesterday that we have to back off on this stuff because he's like cheating on his wife and he's gonna he's like he's like suicidal. I mean he's blaming it on testosterone, changing his he's hypersexual. Again, it's it's not a joke. It's very real. So so most men would like that. Whoa, it's great. I like that. But you know, if you're gonna destroy your life with your partner, it's not gonna be good. And if you have compulsions, that's bad. Okay. So other men feel the estrogen's too much or they're irritated, they're moody. So you want to break it down so it's not going up and down the test and the estrogen. But you want to look at it when you're looking at it at the peak. Is it on the way up on, uh, after 12 hours, 24, 36, 48? Or is it five days or a week later? Is You need to know, guys, are you up? Are you peaked? Are you down? Is it low? 
How did you feel? How do you feel from injection to injection? If you don't like the ups and downs, you have to microdose even further, which I, most men don't have to do. Microdosing further is every day, every other day, using insulin syringe with a 27 to a 29, even a 30, 31 gauge needle, which you can do it, but it takes a lot of work because it takes a long time to draw it if that needle barrel is small, right? So guys do it though. They take 0.1, guys take 0.08. I, I know guys who do like 0 0.008 mils. I'm not kidding. They, they do it on insulin syringe. It's very easy. And they do it every day, every other day. And they keep, literally, they keep their, 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 their levels like, like, pretty close to, to flat. I mean, I'm just being honest. So do you, do you, did you learn something?